Hey guys, I'm actually running the grocery store, but uh, we're in the middle of editing the vase video. And let me just tell you right now, we had major problems with the microphone today. Uh, it cut out many times. Uh, I was trying to fix a problem that we had the other day and I seem to have created more problems. Anyway, I'm gonna have to do some voiceover edits. Uh, missed a couple things here and there, but uh, we did get some other stuff that has, has some good audio and good content. All right, let's take a look. All right guys, we've... Uh... We've abandoned all wheeled form of transit and we're now back on foot here in Rock Creek Park. I'm actually going to cut, you know, cut through here and we're going to go back behind the stables and make our day down to the actual Rock Creek. But it's much more fun to go through the woods, isn't it? Crunch, crunch, crunch. Here's the trail. Here's the trail. Now right over there is the Rock Creek Stables. Yeah, you can ride horses here in Rock Creek. This is not the police stables. The police have, they have a couple of stables in the park, I think, where they maintain the mounted division of the U.S. Park Police. These are like private stables. Actually, they just took a big delivery of hay. I saw a big truck pull in with hay. There's, no, oh, there's a horse over there. He's not, uh, not in this paddy. Back over there is maintenance for the U U.S. Uh, what is it? National Park Service? Yeah. National Park Service runs this. Ooh, big pile of horse dew. So that's the horse center. That's not really why I came. I mean, I like horses too. I came for what's back here. And what's back here isn't really part of the official tour of the Park Service, though if you know what's back here, it's pretty cool. So we're venturing back into Rock Creek, into a place that, well, it's easier to get forgiveness than permission to go visit this next thing. This isn't an official part of Rock Creek. It's actually part of the maintenance yard. And I've been told they're really trying to block access to it. But it's so historically significant. Well, let's just see how sturdy events it is. So the answer to your question, how sturdy the fence is, a lot more sturdy than the last time I came up here. Guys, these are the Capitol stones. And this was the front, the east front of the US Capitol until about 1958, 1959. And that's when a renovation project on the east front saw all of these stones removed and well, quietly basically dumped up here in this maintenance yard at Rock Creek. Now for years, this was open. It was not open to the public. It just was open and people could come back here. But maybe because of some YouTuber doing a video last spring, they now uh, <laughs> put a fence around it. That's kind of annoying. But anyway, these are the stones of the US Capitol from 1958 to 1959, or up until 1958, when they were removed unceremoniously and dumped up here in Rock Creek Park. What a shame. What a shame. Tempting. 
Now, some of the stones have rather intricate carvings on them uh, from the sides. Most of them are just basically blocks. You can see like cutter's marks. I don't know what those called, like a mason mark. That's where that stone came from. They engraved the letter right into the side of the stone. So I guess if they ever wanted to put it back together, you know, puzzle style, they had all the details. Hmm, shame. It's officially closed, but, but, yeah. Uh, so it looks like the anti-fun police have put up a fence around what used to be a rather unique historic landmark in Washington, D.C. Now, just going to be fenced in until the fence rusts, basically. <laughs> Whatever. Alrighty, what do you guys think? Should we make our way down into Rock Creek? It's only about an hour and a half walk uh, from here to the White House. I know that's kind of crazy. We're not that far from the White House. We're probably about four miles from the White House, three, four miles from the White House. Uh, but as you can see, we're definitely in a forest in the middle of Washington, D.C. A few of you actually asked me, why? Why is it called Rock Creek? Well, up here, I think you can get your answer. <laughs> We're up here on Rock Creek, near the border of Maryland. I think you can see some of the rapids. Eh, not really that big, but still. You do know why it's called Rock Creek now. So occasionally we're going to have to cross over Rock Creek and they put in a bunch of bridges all along the water. But you know what? Yeah, I think so. So this is known as Beach Drive, and it runs all along parallel to Rock Creek, uh, basically from Georgetown up into Maryland. Now, during the heavy days of the pandemic, when we were all basically in lockdown, the only activity you could really do was go for a hike. And the government decided, well, let's close this road to vehicles and just let bicycles and hikers use it. So this became kind of like the saving grace place to go and exercise during the middle of lockdown. It's actually quite crowded, but <laughs> it was a place where you could get out, breathe fresh air, and take in some of the natural beauty. The government has just announced that they plan to keep this road closed, no more cars, and just turn it into like a permanent bike hiking area uh, in Northwest Washington, DC. So if I was gonna drive to the White House from here, it'd be about a 15 minute drive, maybe 20 minutes if I hit a red light or something. And there's not many red lights. Uh, but to walk, it's telling me it's gonna be about an hour and a half. I think we may, well, we may go to a plan B, try to find a bicycle or a scooter. Oh, wow, look at that yellow tree over there. Unfortunately here, well, the pedestrian right of way kind of ends. We get kicked onto a bike path, which is under renovation, and we'll have to cut through the city a little bit. So let's make our way, try to find a bike. So we just finished our hike on Beach Drive. That's the road that's closed off. This road over here is not closed off. And I wanted to point out this road because a lot of you asked me questions. Where was the intern, Chandra Levy? Where was her body found? And the answer is, just right around that corner, just down there. Chandra Levy was an intern in Washington, D.C., who, well, was, I guess you could say, dating 
Congressman Condit from California. When she disappeared, it launched a massive search in the city. Congressman Condit was basically driven from office as a result of that, and her body was missing for months. Eventually, some hikers found her up that road. Uh, she had been murdered, and a man was sent to jail for her murder. Though he claims he didn't do it, there are still some today who say uh, the case should be reopened. It was a very interesting case. Chandra Levy. That's where she was found. All right, let's keep going down this path. So over here you can see a dam and a waterfall, and there was actually at one time a water wheel here. And the reason, there's a mill. This is known as Pierce Mill, and this was a grain mill built about 1829. And this kind of represented the start of the Industrial Revolution in the U.S. This place was very mechanized, used for milling grain. Pierce Mill is kept for historical purposes and run by the National Park Service, with one exception, the third floor. You see, during the Cold War, the National Park Service was not allowed into the roof of these buildings. Though they still had a roof, there was an attic, and the door was, well, kept it with a padlock. And who had the key? The FBI. You see, up the hill was, I believe, the Czechoslovakian ambassador back in the days of the Cold War. And on top of the third floor of Pierce Mill were elaborate listening devices aimed at the Czechoslovakian ambassador's residence. They were discovered, well, they were made public as the Cold War came to an end. Yeah, baby. I feel the need. The need for bike. <laughs> I don't care about speed. Stay on the path, I think. So up on my right is the National Zoo. Uh, it's open today, but we're down here and I don't feel like going up to the zoo. Maybe another day. So this is another one of those moments when the microphone cuts out, but as I was walking to get my pizza, this guy asked me for some money. Um, I don't carry cash with me, and I told him, though, I would be happy to buy him lunch. I just didn't have any cash. He was very excited. I offered him pizza. He said, no, I want something healthier. I want to go to 7-Eleven. So we started to head to 7-Eleven, and then he realized the real healthy food was Popeye's. <laughs> so we walked over to Popeye's. He wanted two chicken drumsticks, a chicken breast, and some mashed potatoes. Uh, I decided to just double the order for him. We got four drumsticks, two breasts, four, two mashed potatoes. That's basically his lunch and his dinner. Anyway, guys, as you know, I don't ask for donations. I don't want your donations. I don't need your donations. But if you do donate, I'm just going to spend it on these homeless guys. I would prefer that you spend the money in your own neighborhood, in your own town, your own community. There are people that need help where you are. But if you do donate money to me, I'm just going to buy stuff for these guys. So thanks to those who donated. You bought this guy lunch. That is one slice of pizza. One giant jumbo slice of pizza. All right, guys, so that was a big lunch. And no, I didn't eat the whole pizza. <laughs> there was no way, no way humanly possible to finish, what was that, 10-inch slice? God, I don't even know. That pizza was huge, yeah? Just ridiculous. But I did eat a lot of the fries, because those fries are good. So we're going to head down to the White House, I believe, 
the Canadian Prime Minister is meeting with Biden right now. And then the Mexican. Up here is the Mayflower Hotel. This is where New York's former Governor Spitzer was, quote, client number nine for a high-class, high-priced uh, ring of escorts. And when he was in Washington, client number nine would arrange company here at that hotel, the Mayflower. Just trying not to die. Hey, there's Lafayette Park. Seems so far away when we were in Rock Creek Park. But uh, we're there now. Oh, great. <laughs> and guess what? Lafayette Park is closed. Closed for the arrivals. <laughs> Typical. All that effort. We can't go into the park. Oh, there's a protest, too. Let's go check out this protest as best we can. Well, one of the motorcades is out there parked in front of the White House. I can't make out the flags from this distance. What, these people got crucifixes? What? Why? Oh, God. All right, so there's some people with crucifixes. Here, just across from Black Lives Matter, they're tying themselves. Oh, they're not, they're not nailing themselves, thank God. Some Mexican flags, American flags. The police are kind of, the police are as confused as me. They're just like, crucifixes? Really, guys? Really? <laughs> They're like, what do we do about this? Bueno, vamos a seguir porque lo que hablábamos temprano, ¿verdad? Hay compañeros y compañeras que están haciendo un sacrificio. Guys, guess what? The fence is gone. The construction fence around the fountain has been removed. And we can now see onto the south lawn, all the way up to the door. That's nice. Good change. Still a lot of construction guys around, still working on that fountain. Well, that's a tree, I think, but what is a red tree? But a much better view of the south lawn. I wanted to point something out. The south lawn is actually on a slight incline. You can see it from the way the camera is, yeah? So the ground a bit down here is lower than the ground up there. It's kind of why whenever you see someone walking to the helicopter, they look like a midget uh, compared to the people in the background. Oh, guys, can you see? They're starting to put Christmas lights up. I couldn't decide which way to go, and I ended up going this way, and it looks like I went the right way. The police have closed off this intersection. The bicycle cops are out. I think we're gonna get a motorcade. I just don't know from where <laughs> or where, but uh, we'll check it out. Could be coming from the Willard.
So we're down here at 19th and Pennsylvania, and over there is the International Monetary Fund. And on this side of the street, this is the Embassy of Mexico. This two old buildings and then this modern building built on top of the two old buildings. That's the Mexican Embassy, and well, as you can see, there's not a lot of activity outside. Don't think the President of Mexico is in his own embassy. He's probably at some hotel or Capitol Hill. I tell you what, though, I'm done. Can't really see him. I've got other stuff to do anyway. Let's, uh, let's go find a way home faster than the scooter. So guys, that was my day. Uh, we're now out on my son's soccer practice. It's pouring down rain, it's sprinkling, it's windy. And uh, we're gonna do this all again tomorrow. All right, thanks a lot for watching. See you guys soon. Subscribe if you haven't, and I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.